I want you to think of this museum as a trip through history. Think of art as windows to history. Gulf States Paper Corporation and myself want to welcome you to the Westervelt Warner Museum, the greatest little museum in the world on American art. It just shows you how the Washington... I'm Jack Warner. I hope you will enjoy your tour. And my God, we were believers. I mean, we believed in the national entity and in America. I hope you will love it half as much as I do. That one's like my grandfather because he went to Dakota in a covered wagon. If you become a part of history yourself, which everybody is, well, you get interested in these things. He has an understanding of this country, of what made it great. He knows it through his own family growing up. He knows it through his life in the South. He knows it through his great work, his enterprise in Gulf States paper. Uh, and of course, he has expressed it through the collecting of art in a way that I think very few collectors have been able to do. Jack well, is very enamored year. of the American spirit, he and he doesn't simply wear it on his sleeve. It's not a sound bite. It's the essence of his personality. Jack has been the sort of ideal, passionate collector who has been driven to uh, acquire really wonderful, exciting, important, and very beautiful works of art. And interestingly, not just pictures or not just decorative arts, but in a whole variety of uh, media. This is a wonderful, wonderful painting. It started the whole America as nature. It's American. There it is. It's been to the Vatican as a religious painting. That's God up there. The blue sky in a storm, mortality. It's not just a painting. It's beautiful. It's not just a Thomas Cole. For him, it's a window into the past and he knows how all those pieces fit together. It's almost like Jack will become the painting. I have never seen anyone do that. It's just an incredible love, which is genuine, absolutely real, and extremely unusual. Asher B. Duran when he discovered coal, he became so enamored with coal, he went to France to study Claude of Lorraine. Here we are. We made the land bloom. I'll call it the encroachment of civilization. The train trestle. Here's the simmering factories. There's, figuratively speaking, Fulton coming around the bend with his steamboat. From sea to shining sea, again, manifest destiny. Go west, young man, get in the wagon, heading west, out to the great unknown, get in the wagon, heading west, you be left alone. It's really emotional, packed painting. I've seen people actually, tears run down their cheeks looking at it. It's dawn before Gettysburg, the stark reality of war, Futility of war, the white Pennsylvania farmhouse. This guy here, he's got blisters. They walk 24 hours. It's this one's sick. You know that I walked 450 miles over the highest mountains in the world. And when the guys would sometimes take, we'd walk 10 and rest 10 because we got up, I think, 12,000 feet in the air, and the water would freeze in our canteens and. This thing kind of brings back uh, the reality of, uh, of uh, this half. They know half of them aren't coming back. It was a terribly bloody war. 
I mean, it was slaughter. And here we got it. And it's history. History through the eyes of the people that were painting it. Like Constant Mayer in, eight, in 1865, he painted that. You can see almost the entire history of American art from the late 18th to the uh, beginning of the 20th century in masterpieces. When you think of it, uh, even though it's been uh, more than 30 years, it's extraordinary the number of uh, masterpieces that have found their way into this collection through his brilliant eye and uh, his really his passion for collecting, his passion for American art. Lot 14 for the Thomas Cole, 420,000, thank you, sir. At 450,000 against you, 480,000. At 480,000, 500,000 standing. There's no question that he has style uh, when he's bidding. I mean, it's an absolute uh, auctioneer's dream to have Jack sitting there with his hand thrust upward and leave it there and try to scare off all the competition. 700, 750,000 against you, Sharon. At 750,000, 800,000. 850,000. 900,000. I've taken Sharon ahead of you at 900,000 against you both. 950,000 at 1 million now against you both, gentlemen, at 1 million dollars. 1 million 100,000. Any advance over 1 million 100,000? Hit it. <laughs> against you, Sharon. I'll give you a bit of fit. 1 million 200,000 in time ahead of you. At 1 million 200,000, it's the new bit on my left. Against when he's interested Trump, in the picture, you can be pretty well assured that he's likely to, to pursue it to the end. I think that's what all the great, great collectors will tell you they have to do. Take it. Uh, you know, they have to go that extra mile, that extra bid, uh, if it's an auction circumstance, in order to really acquire the great masterpieces. For you, sir, 139 for 1 million 300,000. Thank you. Maybe one of the most remarkable things, aside from, you know, quality and, well, is, is a consistency, a consistency of vision, which is a very, very cherished trait, I think, in a collector. Well, I rate it very highly because it is the collection of one man, and it's one man's taste and one man's passion, and I find that incredibly interesting. See the way he gets drama? See, starts there and it wash. You can almost hear it. This is, I think, the finest collection of American art ever assembled by one individual. Of course, I think this is the most important painting ever painted of George Washington, because it's from life. It's from life. He has the greatest collection of portraits of George Washington and images of American history from that period, so another passion. I think he realized that he was posing for history. He's coming right out of there in a classic, sort of a Roman sort of a thing. You know, these guys always thought they were Romans. Washington was America for 20 years. Here he is, 20 years old, six foot two, a great athlete. And he got on that raft, he fell off it and darn near drowned. It'd have been terrible if he had drowned, we wouldn't have had a country, I don't think. And here he is in middle aged. And then you come over here, and here he is at Yorktown. He was the chairman of the board. And if we hadn't had him, I don't think we would have ever had a country. Jack Warner, his vision as, as an American, as a patriot, as a collector, that's, that's the wonderful thing about the collection is that it, it, it really says a lot about Jack Warner. I want you to take away from here that, that you are an American and that you're part of history and we have freedom here and you can be all you can be and that you're going to be a man of reason like Washington was. I want you to go morally uplifted and spiritually ennobled by seeing this and looking upward at those eagles. I want you to be a better American. <laughs>